Hello, Mark Sutta, HurricaneTrack.com here about 12.20 Eastern Time. Now October the 5th, 2016. Let's take a look at Matthew from a satellite perspective, and then we're going to jump in to the discussion from the National Hurricane Center. You can see the core of the hurricane now moving off the coast of southeast Cuba here, and the clock starts ticking for the Bahamas and points northwest from there from this point on. The next stop will certainly be through the Bahamas and possibly a landfall in the southeast United States, and basically that means Florida. Florida's part of the southeast, right? And specifically the southeast coast of Florida. First of all, I wanted to talk about the discussion here from Stacy Stewart, kind of looking at each paragraph. The first paragraph indicating where Matthew made landfall in Cuba tonight and that the eye is just now moving off the northeastern coast. We saw that. A uh, little bit of weakening from the mountains, etc., but the Air Force Reserve Reconnaissance aircraft indicate that the central, present ha central pressure hasn't risen much, and the winds are still 115 knots. So this will intensify over that warm water. Next, uh, Stacy Stewart talks about the recon positioning and the steering mechanisms over the next few days how Matthew is expected to move around the ridge of high pressure anchored over the western Atlantic and that the trough coming in over the next uh, few days will weaken and lift out to the northeast and then the next weather system from that they just keep coming one after the other these troughs these pieces of energy coming down so that eventually uh, what is expected to happen and we'll start right here the next trough uh, it's forecast to dig southeastward and amplify over the central U.S. during the next several days. And this is where the resultant significant ridging downstream occurs over the northeastern United States. And as a result of that, uh, the next ridge will build and it'll lift northward. Matthew is expected to turn northward by 72 hours. But it's kind of weird that it turns into that ridge, isn't it? Yeah, just a side note from yours truly here. Uh, turn northward by 72 hours and then northeast after that. Uh, so it's basically a blend of the GFS and the ECMWF, which are not too far from each other uh, track wise. And the shear of about 10 to 15 knots is expected to drop to about 5 knots. The water temperatures are near 30 degrees Celsius or 85, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And this could mean a very powerful hurricane going through the Bahamas and approaching Florida in the next several days. Different key messages here, uh, devastating rainfall, uh, just all-around bad hurricane conditions tonight, remaining in Cuba and parts of Haiti and the south-central Bahamas. And then the fact that as it parallels the coast, that any deviation from their forecast track could result in vastly different impacts depending on where you are. And... If the core of the hurricane moves over the shore, then you've got massive damage from wind, especially over you know areas along A1A or I-95 and points east, possibly. Where that could happen is impossible, even this close to what we're talking about, three to four days away, within 96 hours, is difficult at best to ascertain at this time. And then tropical storm or hurricane conditions could affect portions of Florida, north of the hurricane watch area, meaning from Jacksonville north really, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina later this weekend of the weekend, even if the center of Matthew remains offshore. Uh, and then of course you've got the dangerous surf conditions that are going to be present no matter what happens. So with all that being said, this is the very latest uh, GFS run, uh, the 0Z. This should have the drops on data from the G4 aircraft that I mentioned earlier. So let's take a look at the frames here and see what happens. So there's Matthew coming off the coast of Cuba, moving through the Bahamas, northwest steadily over Andros Island, the northern tip of the island, and then extremely close, if not just barely making landfall there, maybe along, uh, it looks like the Space Coast region here. And then look what happens. What in the world? That's kind of like what the Euro showed. Look at it again coming out of the Bahamas, moving to the northwest, over the top of Andros Island, approaching West Palm Beach, crawling up the coastline. If the eye is 20 miles wide at some point, this is an example, then 
you're going to have the core of the hurricane along A1A down here and maybe even I-95 for a pretty large area, 100 miles or so. This, you just don't get any closer than this. It's in, impossible, even this far, uh, or close, I should say, to the forecast times here to really know what's going to happen with this. But look at that. It comes in there. Uh, this is 36, 37, 40 hours. Look at that real close approach there. And this isn't the highest resolution of the map that there is available. I mean, right there, whew, that is just as, oh, man. I mean, if the eye is about that big, then the radius of maximum winds would extend out like that maybe. And that's probably exaggerated a little bit. It's, you know, hard to draw on this particular scale. But, man, that would put the core just with one foot inland and one foot over the ocean still. And then the rest of this business that it ends up out here just kind of dancing around, kind of a weird face again, uh, or something else I won't comment on, but I hate to laugh at anything like this, shouldn't do that. But let me tell you, looking at it again, folks, if you're in southeast Florida, this is coming right at you through the Bahamas. And it's anybody's guess, you know, what it could do after that. Real close to Jacksonville as well, Savannah, Charleston. Ugh, I mean, the angst for people, I feel it. I really do. You live on the coast. I'm headed in your direction, and, you know, this isn't probably going to affect me directly in my area up here in North Carolina where I live, as it looks like that turn would be sharp enough to the east. But you never know. That could change. So what are my plans? Let me address that real quick, and then I'm going to sign off. First of all, if you haven't subscribed on our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do so. It's a great way to stay up to date on what's happening Follow on Twitter via Hurricane Track. And then we have our app, which I'll talk about in more detail in the morning. But my plan as of now is to pack up, and most of the Tahoe, our Chevy Tahoe that we use for this kind of thing, is ready to go with two very high-end weather stations. I'm going to show you some pictures of that tomorrow as well, get into the field mission side of this. And then I'm going to pack probably a half a dozen of our unmanned camera systems. And if you haven't seen those in action, there is no hurricane coverage that will come anywhere close to what we can do with these unmanned systems. And, I mean, it makes sense. We send unmanned things to uh, other planets, right? And they send back incredible video. Why? Well, not necessarily video, but pictures. Because they're unmanned. We can't send people there yet because it's lethal. Well, being in a Category 4 potential hurricane landfall in uh, Florida right on the ocean front would probably kill you. And so I have technology that uh, my colleagues and I have developed over the last decade that will simply blow your mind. And it's got audio, too. Uh, you have never seen or experienced anything like it. In fact, basically look at it this way. We will immerse you into the hurricane and, and its impacts like you've never seen it before. It's to hurricane coverage what IMAX did for movies, and I absolutely stand by that claim. By the way, I'll be working with my longtime friend and colleague, Michael Watkins. He's down there in southeast Florida. That's where he lives, so you'll hear a lot more about him in the coming days. So, yes, a lot of this will go into our app, the live weather data. I'll show you some screenshots of that tomorrow. So you can follow along in the app. I'll keep updating the blog, or Mr. Watkins will. And so be sure to grab Hurricane Impact on the App Store or Google Play. And uh, we'll be posting videos along the way as well. I can shoot stuff on the phone while I'm driving. Well, not while I'm driving, but you get the idea. Traveling. And then uh, more concise updates produced like this with screencast capability once I get to the hotel. Target area is New Smyrna Beach and vicinity. Uh, working with the National Weather Service Melbourne, I'll stop in there and visit with some of those folks to lay out a game plan and try to bring you the absolute best hurricane coverage that uh, two guys in an old SUV can possibly do. All right, all right, have a good rest of your night. I'm going to go get some much-needed sleep. Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another video for you tomorrow before I hit the road.